Are you looking to be maybe a little bit more careful with your crafty budget? Today I'm going to share five supplies that I no longer buy and what I do instead. Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's take a look. A lot of these suggestions are not going to be about bad quality products or even saying that you should definitely eliminate the same things. It's instead about learning your personal style and trying to find out where you might be able to save money because you don't really use something or if there's actually a better alternative that you hadn't considered out there. So let's take a look at my first idea. This one, um, you probably, maybe you're not buying these already, but it's alphabet stickers. I used to buy alphabet stickers a lot because I did a lot more scrapbooking and I found them really convenient. But as a card maker, I don't actually often want to spell something. I'm usually using like a pre-made sentiment or a word die. But when I do want to use individual letters, I tend to gravitate towards dies instead because then I don't have to worry if I have the right size or color as much. Now these are size restricted. You can't change the size of your dies. But you can pick whatever color you want and you can be careful about buying the size that you feel like generally fits on a card because you kind of know the scale of what you make. But the other option is not buying letter stickers, not buying dies, but instead using something like a Cricut or a Scan and Cut or some kind of other electric electronic die cutting machine to cut words and sentiments and individual letters for you. And I do have a scan and cut and I can use that as a backup option. But just something to, if you kind of catch yourself thinking, oh, do I, well, you know, these would be really useful because I could spell whatever I want. Yes, but you already have a set of alphabet dies in your collection. And so maybe that isn't as useful as you think, or you could save money by creating a custom sentiment with something you have on hand rather than making an additional purchase. thing that I don't buy anymore is flat stickers. And this is a little bit of a fudge just because occasionally something will come with flat stickers. Like this came with a collection pack, so I have it, but I didn't explicitly buy this set of flat stickers. I don't even have a problem with flat embellishments per se, but I know that I like to add a little dimension behind my embellishments. And so I will often go for die cut embellishments instead because then I can add dimension to the back of them. Also with these, so the stickers are obviously sticky on the back and you could put dimensional behind them, but then there's going to be that sticky that around it that things could catch to. You can eliminate that stick by like, dipping it in a little like baby powder or um, using your embossing powder bag. You could like tap that on there and that will take away some of the stickiness. So if you have a set of flat stickers that you really like, then there are ways around it. But I tend to already cut and color stamps because I'm a stamper. And so they kind of a lot of times will serve the same purpose. Although these are much quicker for sure. But another quick option is Creative Fabrica cutouts. So I will download images from Creative Fabrica and then I can print multiples of the same one. I can cut them out, I can add embellishment to the back. Like if I get this and it coordinates perfectly with the paper pad, that's great, but there's one rocket ship and you know, two dinosaurs. But if I buy them from Creative Fabrica, I can print as many of the same dinosaur as I want. I could print it in multiple sizes. I could print them all in the same size. And the same thing with my stamps. You know, I can't change the size of my stamps, but I can stamp multiple color, multiple, customize them to make them match. So that's something that, a reason why I generally avoid the flat stickers, but I will, you know, acknowledge that I do occasionally buy the die cuts that go with it because it eliminates that stickiness on the back issue. I think there'll be a lot of people with me on this one because these have definitely fallen out of trend, but I don't buy punches. I never really bought too many punches just because the time I started crafting, there were already dies available. So 
I tended to purchase dies because obviously space-wise and even expense-wise, a set of dies is usually not that much more expensive than a single punch that cuts a single size. However, there are some conveniences to a punch. It can be much faster. You don't need a die cutting machine, which is a big investment. And so you will have to put that initial investment into the die cutting machine. So, you know, you can buy several punches before they'll even out in price. But then the other alternative to dies is an electronic die cutting machine, which I mentioned earlier with the alphabet stamps as well. I can cut different shapes on my scan and cut, or you can use a Cricut or a Silhouette or something like that to cut out shapes as well and you don't necessarily have to have all kinds of dies either. You can just have that one machine. This next one is a little bit confusing at first. Stamps. I love stamps. I buy all kinds of stamps. But what I wanted to take a minute to mention is I, for instance, be, I'm really careful about the line thickness that I purchase. I often do not purchase uh, stamps that have thinner lines. This is not like a hundred percent I never buy it because if there's a particular design that I really really like or if I've found a really great clearance sale or something like that sometimes I'll make an exception. But what this is more about is thinking about like how you stamp and craft. As you can notice there's a lot of like critters here. I don't buy a lot of floral stamps. So I could also put that on things I don't buy, floral stamps, because I just don't buy them, even though technically I guess that's a flower there. Um, and that's because that's not the kind of thing I enjoy coloring. But knowing that about yourself is great. Also, again, with the thin line stamps, I tried to pull some in my collection that are a little bit thinner, but there's a couple companies out there that make gorgeous stamps that I'm tempted by, but ultimately I rarely actually make the purchase just because they are on the thinner side. And the reason that I don't like as much stamps with thin lines, which I would say in general, Art Impressions has pretty thin lines, but they make gorgeous stamps, so they're so hard to resist. And Clearly Besotted, again, super, super cute stamps. I love so many of their stamps, but they're just a little bit on the thinner side. And the reason that that's a little bit of a problem for me is it's actually a little bit harder for me to color with Copic markers. Now, maybe I need to improve my paper or my coloring techniques or something like that, but I'm about like, what is easy? What do I really like? And also there's like a billion other cute stamps out there. Anyway, when you're coloring with Copic markers, the thin lines tend to show you're bleeding a bit more. It's harder to stay inside of the lines. And so if you're a beginning colorist with, any medium, but particularly alcohol markers, one of my, ma my major recommendations is Lawn Fawn because they have one of the thicker line weight of their stamps. So that's what I'm talking about is the weight of the line, not the thickness of the actual stamp at all, but of the line because it prevents a little bit of the bleeding, it has just, just a little bit more forgiveness and it doesn't seem like something that's particularly important, but it is something I like to point out to new colorists because sometimes you're just coloring something that's too tiny with too thin of a line and that's why you're getting bleeding because it's you're just not there yet. You're just not at the point where you can contain it. And I'm gonna you know, be a little bit more careful if I choose a stamp set with thin lines. Um, but in general, uh, sorry, I just wanna point out also, Sunny Studio has nice thick lines, Avery L. Um, MFTs on the thinner side. Again, super love their stamps, definitely have a bunch, but they're definitely thinner than say the Lawn Fawn line weight. Um, and this goes for like anything about stamps. Find out like, is there anything when you're using stamps that you're like, you know what? I don't reach for that stamp set. Is it because of the occasion? Is it because I've been frustrated with coloring it? Um, you know, what is going on so that you can go, okay, that category of stamps is maybe not for me personally, and I don't have to go ahead and buy that in the future because I'm going to instead purchase something that is a good fit for me that I'll use more. This last one probably won't save you much in terms of money, but I don't buy stamp cleaner, mostly because I don't clean my stamps. And this is a little bit silly, but like Tim Holtz doesn't clean his stamps, so if, I mean, that's what I, I heard him 
mentioned before in a live. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not the expert on Tim Holtz, but I remember watching him one time and he was like, I don't clean my stamps because they stay better conditioned and they stamp better if they're not cleaned. And I was like, perfect, I'm done cleaning my stamps. Tim said, I don't have to clean my stamps, so I'm not gonna clean them anymore. And that's not entirely true. I do have a Gina K tidy towel. And I, before this, I had a Lawn Fawn stamp chamois. Um, the stamp chamois got like really destroyed after a while, but I honestly, at this point, don't even pull out my tidy towel very much. Most of the time, I just let the ink dry and it does stamp better in the future because it's a little bit more conditioned. But you can buy a tidy towel and I will use this sometimes to clean up maybe like my misty door around it. Um, and I'll use, like, if you move quickly and you use water, you can usually get up most of that stuff. Or if I have a really big stamp and I've stamped a lot of extra ink in the center, or, I don't know. I just, mostly I don't clean my stamps. But if I'm going to something like a tidy towel, a stamp chamois, um, I wouldn't recommend anything that has, like, fibers to it. So, like, don't clean your stamps with, like, a paper towel. Because then little bits of the paper towel are going to get stuck on your stamp. And that's going to be frustrating. But in general... You kind of just don't need to. So if you really like clean, clean stamps, then go for it. Um, there was a time where I was a little bit more fanatical about my stamps staying clean, but um, I wish I could say there's like a 12 step program for that because I bet you there's some other people out there who might need it, but there's not. It was just really that one random day when Tim Holtz gave me this magic permission I didn't know I needed to no longer clean my stamps. I hope this video has given you some ideas of what you could think about in terms of your crafty budget, your crafty time. Hopefully this helps you too. Like if maybe you're like trying to clean out your craft room and think about, huh, what has been sitting in here for 10 or more years for some people. I mean, me personally, I've had, these are probably 10 year old stickers. Um, so maybe there is some, they help you to eliminate some things because you know you have an alternative out there or you can help yourself to not keep collecting something that you're not actually using. Um, so anyway, if you found this video inspiring, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know that you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.